1 September 1939, in the pre-dawn hours, the tenuous peace that has settled over Europe since 1919 is shattered as German forces smash across the Polish border. The attack is in response to a supposed Polish raid into Germany. That incursion near the town of Gliwice was, in fact, staged by Nazi agents in Polish army uniforms. Hitler feigns outrage and launches what is certainly the biggest counterattack in history, 53 divisions in all. Poland is a plum ripe for the picking. Forming a round salient in the west, it is trapped between two massive German pincers to its north and south. The Polish army, while imposing on paper in reality, stands no real chance against the German onslaught. The speed with which the German forces slice through the Polish defenses is astounding. German armored panzer divisions smash through the Polish lines on all fronts. The Luftwaffe pounds the roads and railroads, making reinforcement impossible. Close behind the tanks come armored infantry units. They exploit the massive holes the panzers have punched in the Polish lines. Once in the rear, the panzers fan out, creating havoc, disrupting communications, and striking Polish forces from all directions. The Luftwaffe pounds the roads and railroads, making reinforcement impossible. On 2 September, Hitler is jubilant. His armies are well ahead of schedule, and equally important and somewhat surprising, Britain and France have not yet honored their commitment to come to Poland's defense. This is crucial, the Germans know, because their border with France is guarded by only 10 divisions. A rapid response by France would meet essentially no resistance. On 3 September, Hitler's war turns into world war. At 9 a.m., the British issue an ultimatum, giving the Germans until 11 a.m. to begin pulling out of Poland or face war with the West. Hitler ridicules the demand and orders his forces to continue their advance. Everywhere, there are signs of the complete destruction of the Polish military. Smashed guns, dead men and horses, thousands of bewildered prisoners. On the 17th, the reeling Poles get a knife in the back. Russian Premier Joseph Stalin, wanting to get his share in the spoils of Poland, sends Red Army forces pouring across Poland's undefended eastern border. By the 19th, Polish resistance is unorganized and sporadic. Units who stand their ground and fight are surrounded and decimated. Those who try to withdraw and regroup face annihilation by the murderously effective Luftwaffe. Desperation turns to panic as the Poles realize there is nothing the Western powers can do to protect them from the bloodthirsty dictators. By 27 September, Warsaw is forced to surrender. A Polish government in exile is formed in Paris. Western leaders who declined to stop Hitler when he was weak, now must face the reality of Nazi strength. It is too late for Poland. Now they must be concerned with the day they themselves will inevitably have to face the Nazi onslaught.